The Java transaction is the standard in the Java EE world that we use to handle transactions. There are two ways in which we can handle transactions. One is bean managed transactions, two container managed transactions, the most popular way. In bean managed transactions, we as developers handle the transaction in the code. We take the complete control of the transaction by retrieving a user transaction object, which is a JTA object from the container. Container creates it. We retrieve it using JNDI or there are other ways of retrieving it as I will show you in the next slide. And then we will start the transaction. We will commit. We will roll back. So our code has the complete control on the transactions. Whereas in container managed transactions, the container will take care of the entire transaction for our methods so that we can focus on the business logic. That is the main use of containers or application servers. They provide us services. We simply deploy our code and focus on writing good quality code. So here is the bean managed transaction wherein we have an order BO service. The first thing we do is we mark it with a transaction management annotation from the Java EE. Starting Java EE 6, we can do this. And we tell the container whether it is a bean managed transaction or a container managed transaction. By default, it is container managed transaction. In this case, we are telling the container that we want to take control of the transaction in our code. And then we inject the user transaction object. We ask the container to inject it using the at resource annotation. So the container will create the transaction and it will give it to us. It will not start the transaction or commit the transaction. Then in our methods like the place order method, we can say ut.begin, ut.commit and so on. And our awesome great code goes in between those two. So it's that simple to use a bean managed transaction, which is not that popular or we don't use it that much. The popular way is to use the container managed transaction or you can call it the lazy way. In container managed transaction, we need not mark our order BO service with a transaction management annotation. By default, it is container managed transaction. So we simply tell the container what kind or what transaction attributes we want on the class level as well as the method level. Automatically, the container will create a transaction depending on the transaction attribute which we pass requires, requires new, so on and so forth, which I will explain in the next lecture. The different transaction attributes will be explained in the next lecture. All we need to do is to simply mark our class or the methods. So the annotations at the method level will override the transaction attribute that we declare at the class level. By default, the one at class level applies to all the methods, but you can override it at a method level using a transaction attribute annotation at the method level as well. Finally, we can also mark or tell the container whether we want to use bean managed transaction, container managed transaction and all that in the deployment descriptor files for our EAR file using the container transaction XML element. This will override the annotations even if we use annotations in our code, but we usually use annotations nowadays starting Java EE6. So to, to summarize, there are two ways in which transactions can be handled, container managed and bean managed. Bean managed is where we take care of the transaction by taking over the user transaction object from the container. Whereas in bean managed or container managed transactions, we simply use the transaction attribute and tell the container what kind of attributes we want or what type of transactions we are looking for. I will be explaining the transaction attributes in the next lecture.